What's up, everybody? I'm Ness, and welcome to Apology of Today. And I know what you're thinking. That's where you've been. It's It's been two weeks. I know. My bad. But I promise that I'm going to keep sending videos to you guys at least every other week. If you are new at this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the bell notification so that you don't miss out on any future videos. So what are we talking about today? Psh, man, we're going to be talking about do you have a false gospel and a false Jesus? You don't want to miss this. We're going to go deep, real deep. So get your pens, get your papers, your notepad, and open up them Bibles. And let's get to it. Let me ask you guys a question. How would you know if you had a false Jesus and a false gospel presented to you? A copycat, a replica of the real one, but completely empty with no power to save you. See, this is one of the traps of the enemy, is creating false religion and making you believe that you have something that you actually never did to begin with. See, in 2 Corinthians 2.11, the Apostle Paul says this, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. See, the enemy has created false religion to confuse and deceive. Because at the end of the day, it is spiritual warfare, a battle for you specifically. Two kingdoms at war, the kingdom of God fighting for you and the kingdom of Satan fighting against you. So today I'm going to give you seven identifiers for false religion. Seven things that are not in the Bible and are an attack on the Bible and on Jesus Christ. Number one, it attacks the integrity of the Bible, calling it corrupted. Therefore, wanting to introduce a different book, a different doctrine. Number two, attacks the deity of Jesus Christ as God, making him lesser and a created being, not God. Number three, attacks the physical bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, saying that it was a spiritual resurrection. Number four, based on a system of faith plus works for your salvation, instead of what the Bible calls grace through faith only, Jesus only. Number five, usually founded by one person through an isolated personal event or experience with no eyewitnesses. Number six, any claim to have received insight or revelation outside of the Bible from an angel of light. And number seven, some type of hidden affiliation with the occult or secret societies. That being said, we're going to look at many false Jesuses inside Christianity. See, many of these denominations started in the 1800s in Pennsylvania. And Pennsylvania was actually known to be a hotbed for secret societies and occult teachings. Many of these movements that came about was the Unitarian movement, the Millerite movement, and a lot of witchcraft. So today we're going to talk about three of the four of these movements that actually started with a man named William Miller. And out of him, all of these religions came and sprung about in Pennsylvania in the 1800s. The first one we're going to talk about is the Jehovah Witnesses. And they started in the 1800s by a man named Charles Taze Russell. See, Charles Taze Russell was openly a Mason. He was involved in secret societies, which makes sense. This is why the Jehovah Witnesses are not considered a church, but they call themselves a society, the Watchtower Society. And they gather in halls or lodges, like the, the Kingdom Hall. That's what they call it. And it sounds very familiar to uh, Masonic lodges. And what do they believe? They believe that Jesus is not God, the first attack, but a created being now making him lesser, specifically Michael the Archangel. They don't believe in the doctrine of hell. And for the longest, they believe that only 144,000 will go to heaven. Now, as their, as their denomination expanded and grew in membership, they had to alter their doctrine to say, well, now everyone else goes to a new earth. They don't believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ. Salvation is earned through works, not by grace, through faith in Jesus. So it's not guaranteed. You have to take knowledge of God and Jesus by the interpretation 
of the Watchtower Society only. It is shunned that you do research outside of that. You have to be part of the JW organization because they consider themselves the true church. And you have to show your loyalty and dedication by going door to door at least one hour a month. The second one we're going to be looking at is the SDA, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, also established in the 1800s in Pennsylvania. They believe in the Bible, and here we go, according to the visions and interpretation of their prophet Ellen G. White. They believe that you have to keep the Sabbath on Saturday, and Sunday worship is considered the mark of the beast. They also believe that they're the, the one and only true church. Anything outside of that is an apostate faith. And then lastly, they believe in the doctrine of investigative judgment, which is a complete heresy. It degrades and decreases the power of Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins. But they say that after that, he sits at the right hand of the Father, investigating your life to see if it is worthy of you going to heaven. Third, we are looking at the Mormon religion, founded by Joseph Smith once again and during the 1800s. And what they believe is that Jesus is also a created being and the brother of Satan. They believe that God was once man and he became a God. So because of that, they believe that you can become a God in charge of your own planet. They also believe in a system of works and that your salvation is not guaranteed. And then lastly, how did Joseph Smith come about with all this? Because it all started when he saw a vision from an angel of light that came to him and said that the Bible has been corrupted and he was introduced to a new doctrine, the correct one. And then lastly, we have the Roman Catholic Church, which is dear to my heart because I have a lot of family members that are still stuck in Roman Catholicism. I grew up in Roman Catholicism, not knowing much of anything until I came out of it when I was in my mid to late 20s. Finding out the true Jesus and who is the founder of Catholicism? It is Constantine. It is Caesar, the Emperor Constantine himself during the Roman Empire. It was established in 325 AD in the Council of Nicaea. And what he wanted to do was he wanted to unify the Roman Empire from dividing itself. So he said he saw a vision of the cross in the sky and a voice that said, conquer and kill in my name. See, Constantine was never a Christian. But what he wanted to do was he wanted to Christianize the pagan belief at the time at the Roman Empire. Christianity was exploding all over the Roman Empire. So in return, it was creating division, hostility, and different faiths. So in order for him to maintain control, he Christianized their pagan beliefs so that they can continue to worship the way they wanted to worship. So out of this, many beliefs came about that are not in the Bible. You will never find them. The first one is Mary worship. You also have praying to the dead and angels, which the Bible calls necromancy. You have infant baptism. You have indulgences, which means paying money so that you can help others get out of purgatory quicker and make it to heaven. You have a system of saved by works, once again, through the sacraments. So the cross is not enough. You also have church traditions elevated over the Bible, the supremacy of the Pope. You have the confession booth where you confess your sins, not to God, but to a priest, because only the priest has the ability to forgive sins, not Jesus. And then, of course, you have the doctrine of purgatory. You stay in this place, this middle, this in-between stage where you burn your sins off and eventually you're able to go to heaven unless somebody pays indulgences to speed up the process. So at the end of the day, why even have the cross? Why did Jesus die on the cross for you? If you have all these additional things that you have to do, it just doesn't make any sense. That is a copycat. That is a false Jesus and a false gospel. 
See, in every one of these false gospels, including Islam, which I have not mentioned because it's not, it's not a Christian denomination, they all have one thing in common. And the one thing in common they have is that they all saw a vision from an angel of light saying that the Bible has been corrupted and that they've been, they've been given a new doctrine, the truth, the real gospel and the real Jesus. Well, what does it say in 2 Corinthians 14 through 15? It says this, the Apostle Paul addresses this specifically. It says, and no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. See, Paul also addressed the issue in the first century church in the book of Galatians about a false gospel. And he says in Galatians 1, 6 through 9, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you other than the one we've preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you other than the one you have received, let him be accursed. See, this was such an issue even back then that the Apostle Paul had to repeat himself twice. He even said that if he ever came back with a different gospel himself, that he should be accursed. What did Jesus say? Jesus also addressed this issue. In Matthew 24, 5, Jesus said, For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Matthew 24, 23, and 24, it says, Then if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise. And show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So if there's so many false Christs, how would you know the real one? You got to go to the word. In John 1, it clearly says that Jesus is the word and the word is God. In John 3, it says that Jesus is the creator of all things. Through him, everything was made. In John 5, 7, it says that there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all three are one. One God, one being, three persons, the Trinity. And in Colossians 1, 16 through 17, it says that Jesus is not just the creator, but he's the creator of heaven, earth, the angels, and Satan himself. So how can the creator be a created being? So what is the true gospel? In 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 it says that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures and why Romans 3 23 because of sin because we all for short are the glory of God do you have to work for your salvation no Ephesians 2 8 and 9 says for by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. See, this is not a works system. This is not something that you earn yourself. Jesus paid the price, the penalty for our sins. And all you do is you believe, you confess your sins, and you receive Him as Lord and Savior. That is the gospel. In Romans 10, 17, it says... So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. See, at the end of the day, everyone will stand in front of God and give an account. And that's when it matters. That's when it matters to know did you have the real gospel and the real Jesus? Or did you have a counterfeit version 
that gives you no salvation. Because at that time, there's only two things you're going to hear. Well done, good and faithful servant. Or I never knew you. Depart from me.